King Brown is Australia's biggest venomous snake. This is really good combating. Look at the size of him. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today is a ripper of an episode. We're looking back at some of my wildest moments with the King Browns here in the Venom program. And I'll tell you what, the heart always gets pumping for me with these snakes in particular, because they're the one, you know, I was bitten by a King Brown, this species. So it always brings back some really terrifying memories of um, literally almost dying. So. Um, but yeah, we're going to spend the next 20 minutes or so looking back at um, some of the wildest interactions I've had with our King Browns here in the Venom program. So let's go! So we give different size rodents depending on the size of the snake. So these guys will happily eat a large rat. And look, oh, look at that. See what I mean about King Browns biting anything and everything. Look at that. There's venom right there on the enclosure where he bit. Straight away. Boom, injected venom. And look, he's just dragging it away. Imagine that was your hand. You have heard me say before in the past about perfect example, he literally bit the cage thinking there was food there. Um, but here he, oh, look at that. So he's just grabbed it, smashed it. He's envenomating that like he's just caught himself a rodent in the bush. Right, so he's just pumping the venom in. He thinks it's alive. Venom acts as like three things. So it's used for defense. It's used for securing prey like he's doing at the moment and it also aids in digestion. Right, so the feeding schedule with these guys, they get milked once a fortnight, and then the day after they're, like I milked these guys yesterday, the day after they're milked, they get a, a, a feed like that. And, cause he would have given me probably maybe 15% of his venom yields and his venom glands there. So then he has a bit of food like this, which will help him rebuild those levels of, of venom. Um, give him the energy, cause he's gonna burn a bit of energy doing it. All right, cause he's just literally producing proteins that are gonna, Go for a bit of a wild change there and eventually turn into um, some extremely dangerous toxins. So have a go at this. It's going to be nice and quiet. Got to be calm, Bilbo. But he's already starting to eat it. So what he's doing is he's positioning the head perfect so he'll get that nose so it's down his throat first. And look at that. So he's working his teeth, his jaws over that rat and that'll take him maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Right, so a lot of people think they've got, they can dislocate their, their jaw. It's not like that at all. all right. You imagine if you dislocated the jaw and you tried to eat, it would just be flapping around. So the bottom jaw is made of two bones like this, and there's two there so that they can open it like that, open their mouth almost 180 degrees. Their skin can stretch to like eight, nine times the size of their head. And they walk the top jaw over it, like you can see them doing right now. And then they scoop the bottom jaw. So walk a bit more, scoop. Walk a bit more, scoop. And then he'll gobble it all the way down, he'll curl up somewhere warm and he won't do anything for four or five days while he digests it. Oh look, he's got it almost down the hatch. Look at that. This is, for a snake, this is when they're most vulnerable. Right, if a predator came along right now, he'd have to extremely fast regurge that to defend himself. Otherwise, he's completely open to predation. The King Brown is Australia's biggest venomous snake. I've, I know I've said it before, but it's... It's crazy, they can literally get over three meters in length, weighing 10 kilos, so that is a snake you would not want to take it. To be honest, I'd probably rather a bite off an eastern brown snake, like an average size five or six foot brown snake, than a three meter king brown, because it would just be an overwhelming effect of venom. It'd just be wild. Look at the size of him. <clears throat> so, and he's only a young snake, all right? So, I've got a couple in the old program still that have probably got a bit more body weight, like they're thicker than this fella, but this fella's got that length, like he's only five years old and he's already well over two meters. Um, and he has venom yields that are so frightening. He's given us literally almost double, whoa, 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 whoa don't bite me down there. Um, he's given us almost double what the other King Browns are giving us. Let's have a good look at this fella. Massive, absolute unit. So, we'll get him on the venom boil here. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> Alrighty. Come on, mate, you're gonna bite down. Here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> look at that. There's a day realner. <laughs> 
Look at that. Far out. Man, it just, I do this every single day and it still blows me mind when I see that. You know, I think because I know how dangerous it is, like, oh man, that snake hanging off you, loading you up with that would be quite the experience. He's a Darwin locality of King Brown. So King Browns are the most widely distributed of any of our snakes in Australia, non-venomous and venomous. And, oh, there we go, we got him off, thank you. So they're our most widely distributed. They vary heaps in color, size, but these Northern Territory ones, these Darwin snakes, they just get massive. Just ridiculous. So this is one of the smaller of our King Browns. This is one of the females. So you can see the size difference straight away. Much smaller snake, much smaller head. I don't have many of the females, um, but I do still milk them. But this girl will actually be, uh, this will be the last time I milk her till probably the end of the year. Because what I'm gonna do the next couple of months is I'm gonna start preparing her for breeding. All right, so I'm gonna cool her right down. Um, reptiles go through a cooling period, sort of triggers their, um, I guess their reproductive sides of things. Um, but yeah, you can see she's much smaller than the boys. Still a great looking snake and it definitely ruin your day a bite, but um, let's just get it. And you'll see the yield from the girls isn't very big. All right, it's really small, um, but still extremely important. So it's just running down the, the wall there. This is a baby King Brown. He's only a few months old and have a go how cute he is. And yeah, this is Australia's largest venomous snake. Obviously the only little bubba. Um, he's just shedding his skin and I'm pretty sure his old man is shedding his skin right now as well. So um, I didn't notice that when I was walking through the facility before. So yeah, they're both shedding at the same time. But yeah, we breed these top end localities because they get so big and they give us so much venom. They're a really tricky species to breed. Um, King Browns are extremely foody, so when I pair them, I get really nervous because I've heard of terrible stories where people have paired them and the males have grabbed the females and actually tried to eat them because they will eat their own species in the wild. So I don't want anything like that happening to my snake. So um, yeah, it's crazy. And, and the, the pairings, like like it's in the wild, male snakes a lot of the time will combat. So they, they come across each other and they're, they're smelling the same pheromones being released by a female. And they come together, these two boys, and they just punch on. So they just wrap around each other and it's just wrestling. They don't really bite. Um, and then the winner will follow that scent trail, find that female and mate with her as quick as he possibly can. <laughs> this is really good combating right there. Wait. So I reckon our winner is this fella. So I'm gonna put him in with this female straight away. They're getting pretty wild. Come on, boys. Oh man, I've got two snakes here. Look at this. Back in there, please. Look, they don't even care. I'm holding them and they're just wrestling. Look at that. So, yeah, this fell up on top. It seems to be the one that's holding that top position. So, I'm going to put them straight into this thing now. You can already smell her. Look at that, he's, oh, he's straight on, he's straight on. He's going to start trying to um, wrap his tail around her. Right there, so what's happening right now is he's running his, he's literally sliding across her back and their tails right here will actually join. So see, he's getting his Tail right on it, that, her cloaca's right there, same as he. So his two heavy pens are sitting right there. And he's gonna try and get them up under that tail, try and get one of them in. And um, that's how they mate. Yeah, so snake, snake breeding, and um, it can be really stressful, it can be really exciting, it can be really romantic. And uh, yeah, then, then mama, um, you know, she for the next sort of six to eight weeks, develop those eggs, um, and then she'll completely, she'll shed her skin 
completely go off her food. I'll put a nest box in there, so it'll be like a timber box with sphagnum and a bit of soil in there. And at the right time, maybe a, maybe about 30 days later, she'll climb on in, curl on up, and she'll lay those eggs individually. And, and King Brown's, like I think this guy's from a clutch of 18, um, lay the eggs, and then with, with these venomous snakes, they just cruise, cruise. The babies are left to, to hatch by themselves. Mum doesn't hang around. And then when they hatch out, they got a little egg tooth on the tip of their nose and they use to split open the egg. They stick their heads out, have a quick look around and then bushka, they're off. They don't hang around to find out who their brothers and sisters are. They are gone skis, all right? Now we're gonna look at dad and dad just shed his skin, but he's got a bit stuck on his face um, and the top half of his neck here. So I'm gonna get that off him and then I'll milk him because he hasn't been milked for almost a month now, but he's gonna be extremely foody, all right? It's a hard thing with black snakes is they just, anything that goes in that enclosure, they will get a hold of it, <laughs> including my hand. So um, they're real foody snakes, but yeah, see he's got a bit of shed stuck on him there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restrain him and I'll peel all that off. <laughs> all right, so. Got him. Yeah, I might come up to the table here. All right, so I only just want to try and get... Sometimes the snakes have a bit of trouble shedding, so let me just peel it off. And most people don't realise this. They actually shed their... They've got a, like their eye scale. Right there. But yeah, they shed their eye. Crazy. Second one just came off there. It's just really playing with fire. Fingers around the front here. And there's that other eye cap right there. Isn't that crazy? Imagine if we shed our eyes. So I'm just going to get him on the vial because he's just going to start chewing on something if I don't. Oh, what? Yep, that's why we got these top enders, as you can see there. So, but the reason, yeah, like we keep these top enders because we can have less King Browns and, and actually produce more venom. Um, and these are the ones I breed. Now, they're really hard to breed because when they go through the cooling period in the wild, they generally go down into like cool, humid burrows. So I need to mimic that inside their enclosures. If I let it get too cool and too dry, they can end up with a respiratory infection, all right? So I just do um, the, the humid, cool temperature for about three months, and then we pull them out and the females will actually start to do like follicle development through that period. And then um, they ovulate and we pair these in with them and it is really, really exciting. He's normally, he's notoriously hard to get off the Venom vial, this fella. Um, you would have seen him in the first episode of Venom Diaries where he just didn't let go. I have a feeling he's gonna do that again today, but have a go at that. Look at, isn't that just insane? But it's wild to think that we can use that to save human lives. I'll just, it just blows my mind that, that that's what we do. Can you let go, mate? <laughs> this, this fella's having a real crack. <laughs> King Browns, I tell you. So you would have seen it at the start there, didn't want to bite, and now he doesn't even want to stop biting. So <laughs> I haven't had one hold on like this for a while. There we go, beauty. So I got bitten right there. So it, it grabbed hold of me right here and was chewing. And because you would have noticed the King Browns on the Venom Vials, they just grab hold and they just handled his first tiger snake and he was very excited and he's been doing really well with that, haven't you? Yeah. So he's quite good on the tiger snakes now. So now what we're gonna do is he's gonna handle his first King Brown. <laughs> so obviously they are much bigger mate all right like a lot bigger and they're very foody i've gone over this sort of stuff with you before we won't start with an extreme caution that'll be a stitch up so we'll come over here we might get this feather out i'll i'll get that one out and i'll show you and then you'll get that one out so yeah because they're so foody like Anything their head touches, they bite. And I think I was showing you one yesterday. As soon as I went in there, he thought he was getting fed and he get, grabbed hold of the hide box and started chewing on the hide box. So, yeah, I've gone through grips with you before. Thumbs up for these big elapids, right? Just like that. 
supporting. I actually find them one of the easiest snakes to handle, um, to be honest, most of the time. Um, you, we do get the odd firecracker from here and there, but um, most of these guys I've got in here aren't too bad, all right? Actually, I'll, I'll get you to hold this one. Yeah, he's good. So I'll put him back in there. It's going to go into that corner. Good luck. Remember, you're on camera. Look excited, mate. Let's, let's get pumped. You're holding Australia's biggest venomous snake. Yep, so get that tail out. Oh, nice, straight into the thumb up. Just watch that tail going on you. Good. Good? <laughs> yeah, get that hook in. <laughs> yeah, see, you can see now, like, just from what he's been doing with tiger snakes, he's already learning how to maneuver these, the snakes in general, if they're going where they shouldn't be going. Um, his hook technique, his tailing. You know, like literally only six weeks ago, Logan had never touched a venomous snake. You know, held, yeah, he's giving you a bit, I'll open that step back, I'll open that door for you. And now he's holding literally the world's most venomous snakes. <laughs> <laughs> nice, mate, nice. Woo. How's that? That's good? so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was mad. Yeah. Alrighty, hope you liked that. There was certainly some crazy moments in there. And like I said at the start, I always get that bit of a, ooh, when I have a King Brown have a go at me because I always have that flashback when I had one hang off the side of my arm here. So, well, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. You know the drill. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next episode.